guys welcome or welcome back if you're new here I'm Amber from unique upcycles and in today's video I am actually making over a piece for a client it's a very very long time family friend she knew me before I was even born so I'm gonna be making over a little antique table that was actually her grandmother's from Italy and so I will be kind of keeping that theme in mind um, I did travel to Italy so I have a little bit of an idea of what I want to do to kind of bring that in there so if you guys like to see furniture flips furniture makeovers trust to treasures all that fun stuff be sure to hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification so you can get notified every time I post a video I try to post every Saturday morning with that being said let's go ahead and get started Okay, here's the table I will be working on in today's video. Um, it's coated in about two different colors of paint, so I will be showing you guys two different methods on how to strip paint off of furniture. I first started by disassembling the table to make it easier to strip and sand down. After I removed the bottom shelf and separated the top from the actual frame, I was ready to start stripping the paint off. Okay, so the first method I'm going to show you is using a heat gun. This is actually the way that I prefer to remove paint. You're just going to hold your heat gun about an inch or so away from the paint and then with a metal scraper, once it starts to bubble up, you're just going to slowly and carefully scrape off the paint. One thing to note is that you want to make sure that your metal scraper has a beveled edge and not just a flat blunt edge. The blunt one can gouge into the wood and you don't want that. Another reason that I prefer the heat gun over like a chemical stripper is that both options, they're not going to completely remove the paint either way, so you're still going to have some residue left over. Whereas with the heat gun, whatever you don't remove just dries back to normal paint once it cools. You can immediately sand it off. As with a chemical stripper, it usually stays gooey and you have to let it dry overnight for the most part before you can start sanding. Here's a close-up shot of where you can really see the paint start to bubble up from the heat gun as I'm scraping it off. The heat gun method works best on flat surfaces, so if you're doing a dresser, like topper sides, I would highly recommend this option over a chemical stripper. This is also a really inexpensive heat gun. I think it was $15 from Harbor Freight. As you can see, it didn't fully remove all the paint, so I'm just taking my orbital sander and sanding off the rest of that residue to get down to the bare wood. This table is really old and there were some dark marks in the wood. I was able to sand the majority of them out, but I'm going to use a dark stain to help hide that. Okay, so now to move on to stripping the frame, I did use the heat gun a little bit to try to get off as much as possible, but due to all the curved details, I'm going to be using clean strip in the stripper in the 15 minute formula. So I just put it in a metal pan. You want to pour your stripper in a metal pan and I'm applying this with a chip brush. Be sure to wear gloves. This stuff is really strong. This is the 15 minute formula, but honestly, I let it sit for 30 and it worked pretty well. So you want to coat it um, on there pretty thick and then leave it and let it sit for 30 minutes. After I let the stripper sit on there for those 30 minutes, I got a stiff nylon bristle brush and I just scrubbed in all the little details, the curved details and corners and stuff to try to work that paint out. After I got the majority of the paint off with the brush, I switched over to some fine steel wool and rubbed off the rest of the residual stripper and paint. To remove the paint residue off of the legs, I found it just easy to get an old microfiber cloth and literally just rub it right off rather than trying to scrub it with the bristle brush or anything like that. It seemed to work pretty well. After removing all the paint and stripper that I could, it came in with some afterwash or mineral spirits on some more fine grade steel wool and just scrubbed the rest of any residue that was remaining off with that. Like I stated earlier with the heat gun, both methods never completely get rid of all the paint, so you're always going to have to come in and sand afterwards. So I'm just using some 240 and 180 grit sandpaper and hand sanding in all the little details. 
After I was done sanding, I went in with some wood filler and just filled in any imperfections and sanded it smooth once it was dry. This little table originally did have a drawer at some point, but it's no longer part of it. So instead of just leaving this space empty, I'm going to turn it into a little shelf. I got some cedar fencing off of Facebook Marketplace for free. I measured and cut the size three pieces just using my miter saw. Once I had them all cut, I sanded them smooth with my little palm sander to get them ready for stain. As I mentioned earlier, I kind of wanted to go with an Italian theme, so I'll show you guys some pictures from my trip that I'm using for inspiration. Um, I got like a very orange and reddish warm vibe from the architecture and pieces when I was there, so that's where I am kind of going with with this piece. Okay, so now to get ready to stain the top, first I'm just going to wipe back any dust that was left over from sanding with the microfiber cloth. I'm now applying a Minwax pre-stain wood conditioner with a foam brush to this. Just let it sit on for about 20 minutes and then you'll wipe back any excess with a paper towel. I always want to use this when I'm doing dark stains, especially on really old wood because you don't ever know like what's actually in the wood and how the stain is going to take. I am using the color Espresso by Verathane and I am applying this with another 2 inch foam brush in the same direction as the green. Right now I'm staining the top of the table but I did this exact same process to the bottom shelf as well as the three pieces of wood for the shelf that I am making for the inside. I don't like to let my stain sit on too long, so once it was coated, I just left it for a minute and then wiped back any of the excess with paper towels. After all my stain dried, I lightly sanded with a 240 sanding sponge over the top to get rid of any texture and wipe back any dust. I'm going to be applying Minwax Polycrylic in clear satin with a foam brush to the top of every piece that I stained. I did a total of two coats and I waited two hours in between each application. If you guys remember those dark spots that I showed you while I was sanding, I wanted to show you what kind of happens with old wood sometimes. So there it kind of came through a little bit in the stain. It's not super noticeable. I do have my ring light on it so you guys can see it really well. I think it just kind of adds character to the old wood. But just so you know, it's never perfect. Things like this do happen, so if it happens to you, it's okay. Since I did strip this down to bare wood, I am going to be using my Zinzer Bin Shellac Base Primer. I am applying two coats with a chip brush to prevent any wood tannins or anything like that bleeding through my paint. Just hold on tight. When painting tables or anything that has spindly details like that on the legs, I always start upside down. I'll usually do the first coat upside down and then I'll flip it around and do the second coat right side up just to make sure I can get into all those crevices and details. Did it seem to do you any good? After all my primer was dry, I took my 220 sanding sponge and just lightly sanded over anywhere that felt like there was any texture that was left behind from the primer. Sticking with my Italian theme, I am using the color Tuscan Red by Folk Art. I started out by using my bare oval um, decorative natural bristle brush to apply the first coat to the leg here. Side note, if you're wondering why I picked an Italian theme, she did give me free range as long as it was not yellow or pink. She told me to have fun with it and I could do whatever I wanted. I then switched out that brush for my small folk art detail chalk brush to get into all the little crevices and I did a total of three coats of this red paint. And then just like I did with the primer, I started by painting this upside down and then I did flip it around right side up for the next coat. I did flip it back and forth a couple times just to make sure that I got in all these little details and curves that are on this piece. Once all my paint and everything dried, I was ready to put it back together. I started by screwing on the top and I know that kind of seems back ass word, but the way that the screws were angled, I wouldn't be able to get them in if I put the shelves in first. I did recruit my boyfriend to help me put the shelves in and we nailed them in with the nail gun. I waited to seal this piece until after everything was put back together just in case I had any scratches I needed to touch up. I am using Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter and I'm applying it with my Jolie pointed wax brush. Then using a clean microfiber cloth, I just wipe back any excess. 
And here is the final product. I'm not really gonna go over the numbers with you guys as I did this for a family friend and it's not the best example of a commission-based piece. If you did watch last week's video and if you're curious, I did sell those nightstands for my asking price of $225. I had them listed for four days. So I did make my $200 profit. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next weekend.